turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 12. Why are you going to want to say a prayer? Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. Appreciate you, dear God, for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. A light, dear God, our path. We just ask you bless your word tonight. We want to make heaven. We want to make heaven, dear God. We need the word illuminated and anointed in order to inspire us and encourage us and enlighten us on what it's going to take to make heaven. Bless your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we uh, go into this, Revelation 12, we're going to go to one text, verse 11. We're not going to walk through there. Uh, I do want to, uh, I was praying when I, we were passing, I was trying to decide who's going to go, who's going to stay, this, that, and the other. And a thought of mine came at one point to do a, a lesson on marriage. And I'm like, okay, okay, well, and it was like, yeah, do a, just do a lesson or a discussion or something. And just, you know, to encourage each other regarding marriage, you know. But it didn't work out this time, so maybe next time. But since oh. there, after the morning service, I saw Brother Nathan here. And he was supposed to be out of town this week. Uh, uh, they were going out to see some friends in Cleveland and stopped in Ohio. And I looked at him. He didn't look the healthiest. So I'm like, Brother Nathan, you didn't go to Ohio. What's going on? Are you okay? He said, Billy, I wasn't feeling the best. I remember his wife had made a, 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 a prayer request, and I sent him a message. He said, yeah, I wasn't feeling the best, so I had to stay back. Well, his wife was supposed to go having a trip arranged with her friend in another part of Ohio. So I said, whoa. She said, Andrew, you supposed to be in Ohio. She said, well, I couldn't go. She said, I had to take care of him. And she said, Billy, you know what? I said, what? She said, you guys are the biggest babies when you get sick. <laughs> I couldn't go on my trip. It got a little sniffles and I got a cancer in the whole world. I said, Sister Angela, welcome to Church of God marriage. Amen. We can get up and proclaim loud, sing deep, amen. But you let us catch a cold. Oh, 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 please stay home. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Please, I need some soup, I need some tea, I need, go give me this and give me that, please. Oh. And I think about it, and I said, my wife's sitting up here pregnant, carrying a baby over here, this, uh, 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 going through all of the women issues, iron count low, this, that, and the other, and never miss a beat. We thank you for you, Church of God wives. Lord, her earlier, but Pitts not with my sister Betty. I'm going to pray for Bud Pitts. Oh, I said, Church of God, man, Lord, help us to get a little bit tougher. Lord, please help us to get help us to get a little bit, another portion of our wife's spirit. They can go through all type of stuff and just keep on going. You let us go through the slightest thing. We act like the world is falling. Amen. So that's our message on marriage. <laughs> Pray for the brother that we can get tougher. And sisters, you are amazing. You are amazing. All right, Revelation 12, verse number 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Uh huh. <laughs> and they loved not their lives unto the death. All right. We talked earlier this morning about the formula for overcoming. Jesus gave the early morning church here, it gave us and shared with us how they were able to overcome the great challenges that they faced. They faced challenges from the moment the church came into the scene. We know that in the kingdom was until John the Baptist, and at that time, the kingdom has been preached, but the Bible, Jesus said to uh, the disciples, he said that, beauty, who do men say that I am? And they said, thou art Christ. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it's, historically speaking, it is understood that the church was really birthed on Pentecost. So here, from the beginning of the church, the church had went through on a tremendous level devil tried to completely wipe them out and they were able to overcome that and not just overcome it but with victory 
They were able to pull down foster religion and family. Think about the saints that came to Jackson uh, in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, the city had really turned against the truth. I mean, came against the truth on a mighty way. I didn't even know this. I'm reading through the Blazer. We did a, a community project uh, on the Blazer newspaper. And in the Blazer, it had church reports. Every time there was, every week or whatever, it would be a church report. And in it, it was a church of God, the report. And it would talk about uh, the church of God went here and done this. And there was a funeral, and, brother, and, and Pastor Hampton was running a revival over at Faith Temple. And I, I'm listening to all this stuff. I'm like, what in the world? And when I was little, I didn't know what had happened. But everywhere I went in the community, somebody had something to say about the church. And I'm sitting there, I feel like it's more than one church in Jackson. I'm like, man, every black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it didn't matter, at a grocery store, at a school, wherever I was at, everywhere I went, somebody had something to say about the church of God. Somebody knew something about it. Y'all people, y'all got TVs in y'all baby. Y'all people don't go to the, I mean, they had something. Y'all women got a red dress. Why y'all don't? They had something. Well, the church was going forth as it came, and it was declaring the truth of God's word. And what happened was, as they were going forth, the people began to get burnt up by this truth. This truth ain't no joke. This truth ain't standing firm. I mean, young people, uh, they try to have them go to this, 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 young people walk out. All right, we won't do that. Well, we go to church, we won't, we won't participate in that. Not their parents, them. No, we don't involve ourselves in that. No, we, we stand. And not just that, but they bring in taking charts up to the high school and all revivals at Rotary Park and all this stuff. So it was basically what you see here. Not only did the persecution come and try to snuff out the church, and not only did the church survive, but the church thrived. One summer, over 70 people got saved. Young people, all this, they bring them in night and day. The one brother Anthony just preaching, the saints was just going out, coming to serve with this thing, going forth. What? In Jackson, Satan, false religion, lifted up, began to be brought down. Hold on. Hold on, every nook and cry. I've never seen a church like it. Go to the black community, white community, Hispanic community, south side, north side. Way, I'm way over in Hunt School area. And I go up there and I tell them who I was. Y'all, I'm such a, such a teacher that lives out in Grass Lake somewhere. And I said, yeah, yeah, Lee Hampton said, oh, yeah, we know. How in the world are you in Grass Lake? You know it's over 300 churches in Jackson. You don't even live on the south side. You don't even come over here. How do Everybody knows about the church. And I'm sitting here, what, the gospel went forth. All down, doctors at the hospital, go up to that baby with church. Oh, y'all from the church of God. How do you know? How in the world do you know? Where do our nurse put What do you know? The nurse is going to the doctor and telling them, no, 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 you understand. They're not taking this. They're not going to do this. They're not. We need, I, ain't, I ain't say what I ain't going to take. I, I, thank God I'm standing. I hope I don't undo the name the church didn't establish in this community. <laughs> They, she went telling them what we didn't do. No, they not. Nah, they they fight it. Uh, uh, if anything happened, they're going to be up here in a minute praying. They said, yeah. they said, I, I just said they're being quiet. Okay. Very <laughs> well. So the same thing, saints, the same thing that you see, and this is why it's important to, like Sister Di was saying, this is important to know what you're standing for and know where you're at. It's ain't about just a group of people coming together all this night. No, we got to be the church. Say this is no lullaby coming. Oh, I heard it good. Oh, that was good. This thing, yeah. You better hope that there's a gospel that will enable you to have an experience in which you stand. So here, and we're going to get into this tonight, Jesus said, how in the world was able to do that? How in the world was able not only to, to not let persecution snuff them out, but to get the victory over it and thrive, pulling down babbling, compromising, and everything else? Same way. Let's take Jack. Let's take the community out of it. I'm all over the world, online, talking to people, traveling, West Coast, uh, overseas. This day, tell them, yeah, how you doing, Jeff? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff church you got uh, where you at? And Jack's oh. The same thing that I embrace in the community, national. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the church again. Yep, no, they ain't going for this. They ain't going for that. Yep, no, no, they ain't for no worldliness. They ain't for no worldliness at all. Yep, and but but Kennedy and them, they don't go for that. No, they trust God. This. Here, Anderson. Anderson. Big Anderson. Churches all knew about the same standing. 
All right? And it says, how in the world, locally, nationally, are you able to overcome and thrive? Jesus said, by the blood of the Lamb, we're going to get into it the time we ever made, the word of their testimony, praise God, and they love not their lives until the day. We talked about how we overcome from the blood of the Lamb. Everything that the Lamb's blood was shed for, Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, the power that comes with it. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy 2. I want to make one quick point before we go to the next point. We already covered the blood of the Lamb. Everything that the blood purchased, it will enable us, if we stand on it, to overcome. 2 Timothy 2, 19. I want to make one point clear because when I was leaving today, and I promise you to make this clear this morning, I leave it today, I believe it was somebody, I don't think they're regenerated, I, I don't know for sure, uh, 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 they may have gotten saved this afternoon sometime, but based upon what I've seen, not regenerated, and uh, I believe they said something like, oh yeah, oh praise God for that word, well, so yeah, I'm going to be pleading the blood on some stuff, I'll turn to 2 Timothy 2.19 please, <laughs> let's just make this point clear. Amen. Oh, I like how you brought that out. The Constitution back in itself. Oh, oh wow. Turn to 2 Timothy 2.19, please. Nevertheless, the foundation of Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands sure. sure. Yes. Having this seal. Having this seal, this mark. The Lord knoweth them that are The his. Lord knoweth them that are his. And, how do you know it? And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ. Everyone that nameth or proclaimeth the name of Christ. Depart from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. What? animals would come and they would be a part of a farm and it would be a bunch of animals and sometimes there'd be a hole in the gate and some people would mingle or some um, mingle over here over here well the farmer would have what he called a brand or a seal and he'd have his name if it was uh, Mr. Smith he may put an S on it and he'd take it hot and then he'd put it on the ear or the forehead or whatever and every one of his calves or cows or bull whatever was his he'd put a seal on it so there if anybody ever came and said, this is my animal, this is mine, this is mine. Hold on, let me see. No, 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 this is mine, and my seal on it is right here. Right. Well, thank the Lord, just like that farmer, God has a seal. That's right. Thank the Lord. Oh, and it said, let everyone in the name of the name of the Lord, depart. amen, depart from iniquity. Woo. Amen, what? God has a seal. What? When you depart from sin, thank the Lord, Woo. amen, he'll seal you, my God. Right. Amen, he'll name you, he'll, he'll brand you. You truly get saved, you leave all sin alone. Now, hold on. When you truly are born again and you depart from sin, you take upon citizenship. Oh, Lord, help me out. The Constitution and whatever force is coming to arrest that person or get them to incriminate themselves, they have to respect the Constitution that's backing up the person pleading the fifth. I plead, me, I plead the fifth. You got The Constitution is backing me up because I'm a citizen of the United States of America. And this Constitution backed me up. Well, it's the same way, amen, with the Word of God. Amen. You got to be a citizen of this kingdom. You got to be saved from all sin. Amen. If you're not a citizen, you can say what you want to say. I plead the fifth. We're not recognizing that you ain't no citizen of the United States. And that's the same way the devil going to do when you try to plead the fifth, but you ain't no citizen. Peter, I know. Paul, I know. But who, thank you, brother, bitch. But who in the world, you sweet smoking stuff, you wanted me. I ain't got to respect you. Amen. Whatever you're trying to plead the blood against, amen, it's going to go upside your head. I ain't got to respect you. Amen. You ain't got a bit of authority. Amen. I don't fear you. You, you don't got the United States Army backing you up or the United States Constitution. So we want to make that point clear. Amen. This ain't just nothing magical. Amen. But this is something that's about safe for the saints of God. Amen. So we can stand on everything that the blood purchased. We can stand on that and proclaim it when something comes against us or we need something that the blood purchased for us. 
All right. And he said, you'll overcome when you understand that and you have faith in it. All right. So they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Go ahead and read verse 11 one more time. Three prong. One is the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. All right, the word of their testimony. Now, this is a little different, saints, than somebody getting up saying some stuff. All right? But a testimony in the Greek, martoreo, is to give witness to. Right. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. To bear record of. It said they overcame him by the word of their testimony. All right? Testimony in the Greek, martyrial, to give witness to. Let me just say this, and Brother Hampton is always trying to help us with this. To get up in church and say, amen, saints, we can make this, that. Technically, that's an exhortation. A testimony is something that God has done for you that you can give witness to the power of God that was manifested in your life. You come and you stand up and you give testimony to the power of God that was manifested on your behalf. All right? So now it's that they overcame them by the word of their testimony. Hebrews 11.4. Hebrews 11.4. How and why was this so significant? Hebrews 11.4. Come on and read. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. He retained witness. Amen. God testifying of his gifts. Come on. God witnessing. God witnessing, testifying of his, gifts, of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaking. Okay, let's tie it together now. How did they overcome by the word of their testimony? By them getting up saying stuff? No, but their testimony gave witness, my Lord, was what? They witnessed in regards to the power of God. Lord, help me tonight. And that witness provided an increase in faith. Lord, help me. Help, Lord. All right. Every time a trial or temptation came and they stood on God's word, they were able to testify to it. That gave them the wherewithal to stand on the next one. And when they stood on that one and was able to testify to being a witness of the grace of God or the power of God that brought them through, that increased their faith for more. So they were able to stand on that. We don't bring it out to that. How do you overcome? You cannot cheat your trials and overcome at the end. You cannot. Your trials are for a reason. They're to help you to overcome at the end. It was a man, and he was on a journey, and he took a cross, and he was carrying that cross on this journey. And it was a long journey. The journey wasn't a flat road, but it was a road with meandering hills. And every time he came to a hill, the journey, the cross got heavier and heavier. So what he would do is find someone that had an axe or a saw, and he would saw a piece of the cross off so it would be a little bit lighter so he can carry it up that hill. Then he'd go on his journey, and he would come to another one down the road sometime, and he would saw just a little bit, off again. Then he'd come on down the road up to another hill and he would saw just a little bit again. And finally he came 
and he saw the destination. He got excited, yes, if I can now just get my cross there, I'm home. And he began to walk, smiling and excited. But when he was watching, he didn't notice that right before he got there, there was a chasm. And he said, man, how in the world am I going to make it over there? Well, he was to take his cross, and all he had to do was lay it over the castle and walk on in the glory. Yes! Oh, my, my, my. So he got there to the chasm, dropped his cross. To, uh, the cross fell all the way down because it was just a little bit too short to make it over. So he cut it off every time that he should have prayed for some grace, for some strength from up above. What? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What? Their testimony. What they could testify to enabled them to have the faith to get through the next thing that they had to overcome.
And when they came back and checked on these Hebrew boys, it said they were fairer than those that had eaten the meat. So what is he saying there? Because they ate, because they stood, they had the testimony that I did what was right. There's no way I could have made it through that. There was no way I could have got through that. But God enabled me. And God proved himself faithful. God gave me all the substance that I needed. So now, way later, way later, when they said, no one's to pray, no one's to do this, because they're trying to get David, I mean, David, because he was living so right, they said, we got to get him. The only way we can get him is by the kiss king, his God. So they said, how are we going to get him? They said, tell him, don't nobody pray. They said, he opened his windows of his door, of his house, three times a day, got before God as he did four times. How in the world could you do man? You know they're gonna get you to hold on, man. Do you know what? <coughs> Listen, man. Save your breath. Save your breath. I'm not doing nothing outlandish. I'm just taking the next step. Oh, this is nothing remarkable to me. That's right. This is not you, 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 if you see a child sometime at the college, they have these math competitions. You go down there and they'll have them solve for X, solve for this. And it'd be like calculus. And these are like seventh graders, fifth graders. I mean, they just really. They're saying that, Mr. Hampton, I've already taken all these courses up to this. This is not remarkable. I've already done this stuff. And that's what he's saying there. Daniel's saying, I've already proved it. I proved it. I've already stood, and he brought me through. So I have that testimony that I can witness to the power of God that brought me through that. So whatever else I have to deal with, that testimony is going to bring me through in the end. When we don't have certain testimonies that God allows us to go through. See, when we're going through things, my God, they're really to build us up for the next one and the next one to eventually get us into glory. Right. Paul said at the end, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. How in the world was he able to go through that? Pearl in the sea, thorn in the flesh, beaten, three stripes, uh, uh, 40 sites saved one, three times, this, that, yeah. all the things he went through and testified to the power of God. Bitten by a serpent, shook it off, threw it in a, in a fire. All those things, just one after another. So now when he came down to the end, he said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. What? I witnessed to the power of God every step of the way. And now that I'm coming to the end, I'm able to overcome. What he said there in Revelation, the formula of the church going through, he said the blood of the Lamb, he said the word of their, Hebrews 11 is powerful, it's to inspire us, it's filled with what? Testimonies. It inspires us, but don't get it twisted. You won't make it through on Hebrews 11. That's right. That's right. Or on somebody else's testimony. You won't make it through on Sister Green. That's right. Yes, yes. Oh, I hope you're receiving it. You're not going to make it through on great-grandma so-and-so. I love great-grandma. People say, that, oh, but leave wow, your mother and your father as well. I appreciate them. I'm not going to make it through on them. They said the word of what? There. That's how they done it. They got before God. They got experience for themselves. They stood for themselves. So now they were able to have their, I got to have my own testimony. Going forth. Oh, if I told him, if you take my house, if you take my land, if you take my husband, if you take my, I appreciate that. But that ain't my testimony. Right? Amen. I gotta get before God. And when I go through things, I gotta have the grace to go through right. So I'm building up my own testimony. And I'm building up my own testimony. And so when my Goliath comes, I can slay him. And then I can make it on into the end. He said, anything short of that, anything short of that. You won't be able to overcome it. Right. The pastor often says sometimes, be careful. Don't you get a brother of mine, got a, a gospel. And I, I, I go to funeral sometime back in Detroit where we came from. And I see things, some things are alarming. But some things are subtle. And they're real subtle. And you won't really see it. And I remember he talking about West Middlesex. And I said, okay, they're here now. I see this now. But when you stood from it, 
They weren't wearing no pants. For the most part. They weren't if not each other, they weren't wearing no chandeliers. Right. They weren't putting all this stuff on. When you stood from them, they were just battling the wedding band. And they wouldn't even really accept it. But even then, your discernment was of such. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Why? Because you heard leadership getting up. Talking about, my father had this condition, he trusted God. But I got up, I got my people. Just little subtle stuff. Uh-uh. This gospel here is not going to name me and build me up to the point that I'm able to actually go through what I got to go through. The testimony of the saints helps me to get my testimony. Yeah, Hebrews 11 can't bring you through, but it can bring you and help you receive your own. Amen, amen. amen. The saints of God can't bring me through, but you best believe when I'm going through and I'm sitting there, don't know if I'm going to stay or go. Don't know if my child going to be here or not. You best believe I was going over your testimony. Amen. And if I had been in an atmosphere where your testimony was, pray for me tomorrow, I'm going to get this taken care of. Instead of, pray for me, saints, I'm dealing with this. But my faith is strong, and I believe God's going to bring me through. That's what I grew up on. That's all I've ever known. That caused me to inspire my faith. So when I went through, I'm able to say, I can't stand on their testimony, but their testimony enabled me to stand on my own. That's right. So your atmosphere, that's what he was talking about. I said, sometimes I said that. I tell him sometimes I said that. You, you deal with calculus, man, when some people only understand a, a, a basic arithmetic. I said, man, you say some stuff, bro, that honestly, if you ain't got discernment, you think you're talking about people. That's right. You think you're just throwing off them. If you ain't got discernment, then you, you really don't see the depth of what you say. Right. You make it think like this is the only place you can get to heaven. This, but no, 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 you ain't saying that. But you said this level of gospel, any less than this, you won't be prepared to go in the end. There won't be no, what caused the city to feel that way? Because the saints stood, God came through in a real way. If they wouldn't have stood for what they believed in, there wouldn't have been no need for God to manifest himself the way he did. And the witness wouldn't have went around. That's right. That's what he said. So here he said, you're going to overcome. Your formula is going to be the same. Y'all can get down to 2015, 2020, switch it up, change it up. Say what you want. Anything less than this. Anything less than this. You ain't going to overcome in the end. Anything less than this. It's going to be something that gets you. He said, the blood of the Lamb. The word of their test. Listen, the young people come up here and start singing. Wow, we the young people choir, and we're going to be an adult choir. Oh, they can exhort. They say, if they don't get the same testimony, the same experience, the same prayer life, that same praying through. Brother Herndon was bringing out in that Sunday school class. Right. Praying through until praying through again. Right. If, they, if these young people don't acquire that same experience, they can get this new age gospel if they want to. I'm going to switch it around. It don't take all that. Say what you want. Right. And you can renegotiate all you want. But in the end, if you don't follow the formula of having a gospel that's staying, it don't matter. It don't, I'm staying. As for me and my house, I'm standing. I'm standing, my God. I'm standing. The word of my testimony. What? Having parents growing up. My God, children trying to bring TV in the house. Uh, stay with their girlfriend. Talking about you going to the park. No, you're not here, you ain't. That's right. No, 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 no. You, you, you ain't going to live here, you ain't. That's right. No, I ain't going to support you and supply you. And this, and the other. My God, no, I'm not. What? That testimony. My Lord, that inspired me. Amen. Now, I'm dealing with teenagers. Hold on. No, you're not in here. You're not. Hold on, my God. No, you're not, my God. Amen. 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 No, no, sir. But what? The testimony of the saints standing. I'm not going to amen. I'm not going to compromise and this, that, and the other. It won't be no testimony. That's right. It'll just be, hold on. It's just, it's just a free for all. What? Uh, when there was no king in Israel, each person did what was right in their own eyes. And that's what okay. amen, the enemy would love to do is to marginalize the ministry. Marginalize the gospel. Marginalize it to make it in the atmosphere where it's, it's each his own. Choose what you want. You choose what you want. This, that, and the other. Hold on. The gospel here will produce a testimony. And that testimony can increase your faith to allow you to take the next step and the next step and to overcome in the end. All right. Let's go to the next point. Amen. Next point, he says, go ahead and read that one more time for me, sis. Revelation. Yep, Revelation 12, 11. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Uh -huh. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And they loved not their lives unto the death. All right. Now, it's really, I want to read, read a portion of uh, testimony in Revelation explained the bishop in Africa. Um, before we go here, this is, this is the final point. Three levels of loving not their lives unto the death. Go over to Galatians 2.20. How they overcome Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Okay. So here, the church had to overcome and love not their life until the death. And we're going to look at three levels of this. One was the death of the old man. In Luke 24, he said, Terry, ye in Jerusalem, because repentance produces a new birth, but sanctification is a death. So in Luke, the ninth chapter, about the 45th verse, we'll go there, he saw them arguing among themselves who was going to be the greatest. He said, the church is not going to overcome. He said, you're not going to overcome, because unless you tarry, in Jerusalem, until the old man is dead, you're not going to overcome. There will be a victory that you will not have unless the old man is crucified. Love not their lives until the death. Go over to Hebrews 6 1, real quick. Read Hebrews 6 1. Let's line it up. Let's line it up. Hebrews 6 1. Therefore, leaving the principles. <clears throat> Of the doctrine of Christ, uh -huh. let us go on into perfection. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the foundation, repentance. The foundation, remember we read the scripture earlier, said the foundation, Lord, stands heaven and still. Let everyone, the name of the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity. Right. The foundation, repentance from dead works. All right, let us leave the, the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on to what? Perfection. Let us go on to perfection. Not again. Okay, hold on. Let's go on to perfection, sanctification. The dying of the old man, come on. Not laying again because the foundation if you don't, what of repentance. Happened? Not laying again the foundation, what? Eventually something gonna come up that you're not gonna be able to overcome because the old man in you is not gonna allow you to do it. So you're gonna end up having to lay your foundation over again and again. And again, everything that comes this way. If you don't go on and say, Lord, I'm willing to die. The song said, I saw the death. I had to die. I had to die. A death in which my soul did cry. Here, amen, the church would have been a boatload of confusion and mess if they hadn't gone on and said, Lord, crucify me, as Paul said. Amen. Cru Lord, I'm willing to die. Here they were arguing. At one point, man, they came up to, uh, to get Jesus, and they were in the garden. You know what Peter did? Man, Peter went and grabbed the sword, bro. Right? Hold on. In today's, he, 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 went, he went back and got his, here he is, got his gun. He strapped himself and came and cut their ear off. He said, man, Peter, Jesus had to go back, put up, put this ear back on. What is he saying there? What? Jesus was their minister. He said, if you don't go in and get that out of you that caused you to fight people back when they do you wrong, then the ministry is going to keep having to go behind you and keep healing stuff and keep cleaning up stuff that you're involving yourself in. I don't care what people are doing. Don't fight carnally. Don't you be shocked how many times the ministry is going to clean up some, somebody fighting carnally. It's talking about people. Saying something. Let God deal with that. Pray it through. Pray it through. You ain't got to talk about it. You ain't got to testify about it. You ain't got to do nothing. Pray it through. Keep your spirit right. Stay focused. 
and God had blessed. Woo. But here, he had to keep going over and over. And he said, listen, they love not their lives until Jesus said, stick in that room and go ahead and die. That's right. Get in that room and go ahead and die, and you'll be able to overcome. You'd be shocked how many times saints will wound the old man, but they don't kill him. They wound him. He walk around with a limp. He, he, he's wounded, he ain't what he, but he ain't dead. He ain't, he, he ain't dead. Push him far enough. Push him, push him far enough and see what happens. See if they don't come out swinging. And what I mean by that is, you may say, no, I believe you. I don't repent. You'd be shocked how many times people got stuff that they haven't repented over that they need to repent for. But because we get a doctrine of holiness, we think that uh, uh, we should never repent. Listen, if you go against like something you knew better than what you did, then you need to repent for it. Right. He said, God, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Go to that, I'm sorry. Right. I said this, that, and the other. I shouldn't have said this, that, and the other. Right. I'm sorry about it. Lord, help me. And now I want to go, well, Lord, what's the source of that? Right. Why every time I'm at the cleaners and she do my stuff wrong, right. why every time I'm at work, that one lady, why I, I, I just can't, I just, I just find myself, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> why every time my spouse asks me to do this, I just find the oh, just slamming the door. Learn your foolishness. Why did I do it? Uh, uh, uh. Honey, what you about to do with those eggs? Uh, huh? Help, Lord. My Lord. Oh, just sit there. Oh, hold on. He says, you want to, the church, how they only came? They love not their lives into death. Lord, I don't love I, I don't have to fight back. I'm going to get on the altar and I'm going to die. I'm willing to die. I want to overcome all the way. Over in Acts 19, this was so serious to them. As soon as they came, they ran up to him. Have you died? As soon as they saw him. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Yes, sir. I know you've been born. Have you died? No. Why? Because we ain't going to overcome in the church unless you do. That's right. Over in uh, Corinthians, the third chapter, I believe what Paul went, he said, listen. He said, I, I, I want to give you guys this thing. He said, y'all can't receive it. That's too much carnality. He said, no, man, no. Who you saying? You Apollos? You are uh, pop, uh, this person, the party spirit. I'm with this group. I'm with, I mean, I'm with God. Right. Amen. I'm standing for truth. Amen. Amen. I'm going all the way with the gospel. Amen. Amen. Change this gospel. We're have a war on our hands. Right. For the gospel sake, righteously. But amen. So here, he said, first of all, the ability and the wherewithal to go all the way and consecrate, as Romans 12, 1 says. Go over to 2 Timothy 4. Do the second piece of this. 2 Timothy 4. Overcoming. Overcome. Love not their lives until the death. 2 Timothy 4.10. For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto the mm -hmm. Credence. Let's stop right there. Demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. One was love not their lives until the death of the old man. Love not their lives until the death of this world. Many times individuals don't overcome because something ambitious in this world get them still involved. Here was Demas. Here was Demas. Love this present world. Couldn't overcome and go forward with the brother. Couldn't overcome and be everything he could be for God. Why well, had some ambition for the world? And ambition for, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to do this. I want to do that and the other. So here, he wasn't even overcome. Everything that his ministry could have been, everything this, that, and the other, plus I can't even use it. He loved his present world. He trying to make it a, a dollar. He trying to make it. And my pastor said sometimes, seeing brothers get that in mind, I'm going forward for the gospel. I'm going all the way. But something come up. And now they're more interested in getting a few dollars in their pocket than getting a few souls saved. And you oh, need, they may sound the same. But sure. so if you look deep enough, you look deep enough, you will see that same fire. Same fight. See, saints, my God, they say they're ready to go for They go sell all the way out. They say, but something here, you know what? I had this uh, 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 class. Man, the class ended at 6. Service starts at 7. I didn't even see you. I remember before, man, listen, you, you took a shower before you left, grabbed your clothes, changed. Man, I, I, I didn't see it at all. Seeing brothers, my God, working at the prison Thursday, they had their clothes out in the car, up in the service. They had to punch in at 945. So Wednesday night, we served. 
9, 9, uh, 30. If they had a time, it'd take nine minutes to get there from Cooper Street. This, that, and the other. They driving down the street, got their shirt, putting it on. They came in with their uh, pants on, but they didn't want to have a uniform on in church. This fire, fire, fire. When all oh, something happens. Something happens. Same one sitting down in the hallway talking to him. What in the world you got to talk about doing church? I don't care about no Kobe Bryant. Who? Right. Care about no, uh, what the man you heard about, uh, no, uh, what the football team did. What, who did? We talking about the gospel overcoming in the end, and you on the other side talking about some other, uh, other stuff. What? Right. I remember, brother, when you, my God, running late, you almost seen yourself. Oh, my God. Oh, praise God. So, one, one to be there. Couldn't wait, my God. But well, what happened, my God? The job gave you a promotion. Oh my God, okay, man, I'm getting this, man. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do this, and I got this, man, I got this on the side. Everybody puts all you gotta do, man, let me sign you up. Then you go sign up two people, then you get 10 people, and then, man, I'm gonna retire, man. I ain't got to. Help. Remember before, we was calling each other, going forth, going, uh, I was standing on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having 12 heads and 10 on, 4 o'clock in the morning. Hey, man, brother, I got some light. Help. Now, brother, Chris called me, talking about signing me up. I'm not saying that wrong, whatever you wanna do, but my God, when you replace the gospel, when I used to hear you, my Lord. we can be friendly and pat people in the back all we want, but I'm going to tell you, the saints know. The saints know. When you act, when, when it used to be a thing about you, my God, you call them 6 o'clock in the morning from saints of the day. So, brother, we going around calling saints. 6 o'clock in the morning, my God, firing you up. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Keep it up, my God. My Keep it up, my God. That's, that's where the church power comes. Hey man, power comes back. I got that consecration, my God. But here, he said, they love not their lives until the death. I don't care about that. I don't care. It don't matter. It don't, it, it don't matter. I heard about growing up, my God. Brothers would not take this the right way. But brothers, my God, my God turn jobs down. No, I ain't working that job. That's going to keep my, mess my consecration. I got, nope, I don't care. This one is $2 less an hour. I'm taking this one. So I can be that. Man. Man. That's right. I mean, we had no air condition back then, my God. We had the windows open. My God, cars right down the street. But you couldn't hardly hear the cars. My God, saints going forth, so. Amen! My God, it's a simple scripture going forth. Amen. In the beginning, God. God! In the beginning, yes, sir! Now you must want to turn flips, turn three scriptures, bring it out. <laughs> you sing a song, choir going forth, choir getting almost whole. Singing with everything they got. Amen, it's that. They looked at you. <laughs> Back in the day, it was a joy to be in the choir. You get up there, half out of tune, in tune, get up into a simple little song, say, glory be to God. Oh, you think you can sing for real? Woo! Man, we, we tore it up today. But that was the Holy Ghost because they hadn't ate in three days. That was the Holy Ghost. Right? They gave up that job paying $19 an hour and died. Right. Love not the world, took the one that's only paying $9 an hour. So you better believe any song or a little bit of inspiration, they came to church with inspiration. Hooray! My God, <laughs> amen. Forget that 1990 or night back then, 1988 <laughs> Oldsmobile, my God. No, we got a 78, but my God, we got some power. We ain't got that car, no, but we got power. My God, my God, glory, repeat it, love not their lives. Oh my God, amen. So they possessions had and all things come. Well, they were going house to house, breaking bread. My God was fired down and they love not their lives. They don't matter, I'm giving it up. My God, going for a brother challenger. I done gave that stuff up, brother. My God, amen. I ain't seen no fool. I, I got to know how many rebounds LeBron James had the last 10 games. This, that, that. I had to crack open what the Bible teaches and could not explain the difference between regeneration and forgiveness. Help us, Lord. But no. No, no, no. Getting before God. I don't care about my life. I don't care about that. We grew up with parents that love not their lives. It was like the whole life was a gospel. The gospel. The gospel. Amen. The gospel. Amen. Hear about the source? She didn't understand the like gospel. Amen. The gospel. That's all we knew. Mom and dad is anything other than the gospel. The gospel. Amen. The gospel, my God. Amen. The gospel, my God. We go to church, my God. Some saints come over the house. They have another church inside church. After church, my God. The gospel, my God. Amen. But hey, I'm talking about the gospel, my God. Amen. You hear about that gospel, brother? My God. Amen. Say the word. They overcame the world. children, my God, to go and break records. I'm trying to raise some children to go do some work for the Lord. My God! 
the gospel, oh my God, the gospel, amen. Go forth, take this gospel all over the world, son. Daughter, take this gospel all over the world, my God. That's the only reason why God gave it to you. My God, to go forth. But if we ain't careful, we don't want to die out to this world. Everything we have, everything God gave us, dead to this world. But alive to Christ, I say, what? He says, y'all want to be an overcomer? Y'all want to be an overcomer in church? You're going to love not your life until the death. You're going to love not your life? Our resting shall be over there. We ain't making no kingdom in this world. We ain't careful, my God. We're trying to be kings in this world. We're going to get a different reputation in the community. All y'all church of God, folks, man, y'all going for y'all. Lord, help us. So here, he said, if you want to know how they overcame, he said they love not their lives until the death. Go over to Acts chapter 6. I'm sorry, go to chapter 5 first, real quick. Acts chapter 5, the last part of death was their natural lives. Acts 5, uh, go to start reading verse number 12, and then we'll shoot down. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders. But lady, what happened to the water, man? <laughs> Rock. But lady told me to up my consecration basin. I said, my God, that was my God. You may be talking about back in the day, but I didn't need no one. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Go ahead and read. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. My Lord. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Mm -hmm. And of the rest, there is no man joined himself to them. Mm -hmm. But the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, mm -hmm. insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least of the shadow of fear passing by might overshadow some of them. Oh my God, my God. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks. Skip down to verse 28 for time. Say, come on and read. See this power manifested. But look what it caused. On the outside. Come Say, on. did not we straightly command you that you should not oh, teach God. in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and now, said, Now mind you, the same authority had the power to crucify Christ and everything else. That's right. These brothers, just a few days later, don't think this was many years. This was a few days later. That's right. They were doing the same power and manifest themselves the same way that Jesus was. So here they came and said, don't teach or preach in his name no more. Or we're going to do basically what we did to him. Watch what he said. Come on and read. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, yes. we ought to obey God rather than... Okay, we're going to pack our bag up and we're not going to... Love not their life to the death. If y'all going to take us out for preaching the gospel, then go ahead and do what you got to do. Stephen, they said we're going to kill you, man, for what you're preaching. Stephen took it from the beginning all the way to the end and preached Christ. He told them he stiff now, I mean, nailed them. Stood on his conviction, even facing natural death. He said it don't matter. But what happened? If you read and hear where they, uh, uh, stood, when they said, didn't we tell you don't do it? Well, they stood and ceased not to preach verse 42, but they said ceased not to preach Jesus Christ day and night, and then you keep reading, it talks about how the Lord added. That's right. and Stephen, when he stood and they were going to kill him, it said a young man by the name of Saul was there watching. Follow this and how they overcame. Saul was consenting on his death. Stephen stood, Saul saw the conviction in which he stood with. And said, ye sit neck, do what y'all want to do. But I see God standing, Jesus, standing at the right hand of the Father. I mean, he was proclaiming it with any wavering whatsoever. And because of that, Saul saw what he had was something different. 
and saw the manifestation of the power of God that's only manifested in times of unique standing. That's right. Oh, Lord, let me say that's that right. again. That's right. Saw the manifestation of the power of God that's only manifested in times of unique standing. It's a way God has not made himself real to you because you haven't needed it to that degree. But if you ever, we don't got to fear somebody coming up here and saying, listen, I'm going to burn you up and say, saints, those saints that you read about, and I'm about to read about one right now, where they have uh, 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 praying and they're burning them, this, that, and the other, God makes himself real to them at a way in which far greater than he ever did in his life. That's right. And if me and you ever go through something, it's the same thing with the three Hebrew boys. It said the fourth man was in the fire. They had never seen him before like that. But what? He was in the fire. So here, Stephen stood. Paul saw it. Paul, a few days later, on the way to Damascus, as Brother Frank was talking earlier, saw a light. And God was able to use that standing to save him that caused Paul to go forth for the gospel. So here it said, they love not their lives unto the death. A.D. 284, Domitian, a pagan, succeeded to the imperial throne. Before the close of his reign in 305, the Christians suffered the most terrible persecution received at the hands of pagan Rome. Brother Smith wrote this in Revelation explain. It continued 10 years, A.D. 302 to A.D. 312. It was the design of the emperor to completely exacerbate the very name of Christianity, to remove it. And his unfortunate victims were slain by the thousands throughout the empire. It was a terrible time for Christianity. But the masterpiece of his heathen policy was the order to seek and burn all copies of the word of God. Hitherto, the enemy had been looping off the branches of the tree whose leaves were for the healing of the nations. Now, the blow was made at the root, the word. It had once been the policy of Antichus Ephesus when he made, sought to destroy the Jewish scriptures. It was both wise and wicked. It had but one defect. It could not be carried into complete execution. The sacred treasure was in too many hands, and too many of its guardians were brave and prudent to make extermination possible. An African bishop said, here's my body. Take it. Burn it. But I will not deliver up the word of God. A deacon said, never, sir, never. Had I children, I would sooner deliver them to you than the divine word. He and his wife were burned together. Butler's Ecclesiastical, just to encourage you, here it said they love not their lives. It said if you want to be an overcoming church, an overcoming people, your consecration is going to have to get to the point. Lord, it don't matter. If you place something down in my heart, I'm standing on it. Man. I'm willing to go all the way. All the way. He says, the only way, you, if you want to overcome like them, you're going to have the blood of the Lamb, word of the testimony, and the same consecration. Well, if you read the 12th chapter, it said, but the earth opened up the woman. I'm sorry, the earth opened up to help the woman when the flood came. Well, Brother Smith began to break down how the earth opened up to help the woman. Thank God for the power of God. Right after this, when they stood, remember, right after the, the saints stood early on, Pentecost broke out, man child born. Right after Stephen stood, Paul gets saying that then no world is shook up. Right after the worst extinction policy to destroy Christianity took place, to burn all the Bibles and burn up thousands of the saints in 302 to 312, just a few years later, the earth, one of the emperors came up 
most powerful around by the name of Constantine. He ended up reversing it, embracing Christianity, and then said, this is the religion that shall be bagged up by the state. We support it, let it go everywhere and be preached in every corner of the world. How in the world did they overcome that? Because they love not their lives. My God. And he saw, here these people are being burned and, and destroyed, but their faith is unwavering. Amen. Their faith is unwavering. God is coming through for them. He ended up <coughs> embracing and advancing it all over the world, and the church overcame. He said, how did they overcome in the beginning? The blood of the land, I'm standing and I'm pleading and I have faith because I believe that Jesus shed his blood and everything that his blood was to do, I have faith and I believe it and I proclaim it and I plead it and I embrace it. The word of their testimony, they went through each thing that God sent their way and they were able to testify. I was thinking about John Warren. And I was talking to him earlier today. We were talking about preaching the gospel. And I said, man, listen, I want the fullness of God's healing of you, man. I'm, we got to go, brother. Let's take this guy. He said, amen. But you know what? It's been one of the most remarkable things, Pastor often alludes to it, of his testimony of the grace of God. Man. How in the world, how in the world, those children and wife driving out of town to work, snow outside, the grace of God, the grace of God. I said, Lord, the medical science said, I don't know how you're even alive. I don't know how you're hurt. I'm just telling this that I shouldn't say because of here, but it's times when you're going through. We on the phone with Sister Linda, the pastor. She said, listen, y'all understand. Your body is made up of muscles. Your muscles are doing stuff for you. His muscles, because of the condition that's been diminished, where his heart is doing what some muscles are supposed to other muscles are pulled. You only can, I mean, she put, if God, this was years ago. But God, the power of God. Y'all should have been here on Monday night. I come up in here, man, I'm hearing all this screaming and leaping and shouting and screaming and running around, making me think y'all back on high street, Sister Kim. I'm like, what in the world is y'all? But y'all on the other side. On the other side, it was the church. And then there was a, a courtyard right there in the middle. That we, we used to play in that little courtyard, right? I said, man, y'all make me think this is on the other side when the same children used to play in the courtyard. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I walk, I said, I got to follow this up. What in the world? And they tell me, after I got home, I didn't really what? They said, man, you missed it. But John Warren came over here, took the mic, and started singing bass. Oh, we go. I'm like, my Lord, help me, my God. The grace of God. The grace of God. What he can testify to, saying, Lord, there's no way I'm supposed to be here. No way I should be able to do what I'm doing. But the testimony of his grace going to be the very testimony he stands on, amen, for the completion and to carry him on in the end. And then lastly, he said, love not their lives. Lord, love not my life. Burn me up, God. I want to overcome. I want to be part of overcomers. If any part of me is left, any old man is still alive, I'm not going to be overcome like I should be. Lord, if I'm not over this world, this world is not dead. The song said, dead to every worldly pleasure. Dead indeed to sin am I. But alive, Christ my Savior, daily to the end.